If you want to find the real zeros of a polynomial function, this method will always work. To do this, we want to go ahead and find the possible or the potential zeros of the function first. And to do that, we need to find p's. And p's are going to be the factors of the constant of the polynomial function. So in this case, the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. And what's important here is that we need to go ahead and add the plus minus for the list of p's. Next, we need to find q's, and q's are going to be the factors of the coefficient of x cubed, or 2 in this case. And factors of 2 are 1 and 2. And once again, we need to go ahead and add the plus minus. Once we have the p's and the q's, what we want to do is list all the combinations of p over q possible. Let's begin. Let's start with the 1. So it's going to be 1 over the 1 here for the q. So it's going to be 1. Again, don't forget the plus minus. Next, while keeping the p as 1, we're going to list 2 for the q plus minus. Next, we're going to be using the 2 as the p. So we have 2 over, and again, q is going to be 1, 2 over 1. Again, while keeping the p as a 2, we want to put 2 as the q in the denominator. Continuing, let's change the p into 3. q will be 1. Again, when p is 3, q is going to be 2. And then the last p we need to do is the 6. So if p is 6, q We'll use the first one or the 1. And then lastly, 6 over 2 is going to be our uh, p over q. Notice, whether you have 1 over 1 or 2 over 2, they both represent 1. So we're going to eliminate this from the list. And we also have 6 over 2, that's 3, which we have as 3, uh, 3 over 1. So we're going to eliminate that from our list as well. So these are going to be our possible or potential zeros, meaning one or more of these numbers that we have listed for p over q are going to be the actual zeros or real zeros of this polynomial function. In the next step, what we want to do is we want to find out which of these possible zeros are actual real zeros to the function. There are two ways to do this. We could either, for example, take the 2, plug it into the function to find out if it gives us a 0 to determine if 2 is a 0 of the function. However, this could get tedious and take too much time. So instead, we want to use the synthetic division method. To do that, we go ahead and list 2, 11, negative 7, negative 6 from the function. And then we'll pick a number, such as 2, like here, and continue with the synthetic division process. To do the synthetic division, we take the first number, or the 2, we bring it down, and we multiply the 2 times 2, where we get a 4 here, and we add up and down, and 11 plus 4 is 15, and once again, we'll take that 2, multiply by 15, where we get a 30. If we add up and down, once again, we get a 23, and then 2 times 23 is 46, add up and down, and we end up getting a 40. Meaning, when we plug in a 2 into the function, we don't get a 0. Instead, f of 2 will actually equal 40. What does that mean? That 2 that we have here is not going to be 1 of the 0. It may be negative 2. But we know for sure the positive 2 is not one of the real zeros. Let's go ahead and use the synthetic division again and try out a different number. In this case, let's try out 1. So again, starting with the number 2, we bring it down. And we multiply the 1 to the 2. We get a 2. 11 plus 2 is 13. 1 times 13 is 13, negative 7 plus 13 is 6, and 1 times 6 is 6, and negative 6, 6 is 0. 
What does that mean? It means that if we were to take f of 1 or take the 1, plug it into the function, we'll get a 0. So there you go. 1 is going to be one of the real zeros of this polynomial function. Then to find the rest, what we want to do is take these numbers, so 2, 13, and 6, and write it as a function. So we have 2 x squared. Notice we started with a degree of 3. Once you do the synthetic division, you go down by 1. So that's why it's going to be on x squared plus 13x plus the last one will be 6. Notice we start with x squared, x, and no x. And then we'll set this equals 0. And then to find the x or the 0 of this equation or the function, we're going to be factoring this. We get 2x plus 1 and x plus 6. So from here, we get x equals negative 1 half. And from here, we get x equals negative 6. Therefore, all the zeros of this polynomial function are going to be 1 that we found earlier. And we also have negative 1 half and negative 6. So this method will work whether the degree is 3, 4, 5, any polynomial function, and it has real zeros, and this method can be used. Mm -hmm.